ASP.NET Web API. Where does ASP.NET Web API fits in? So it fits over here. Now ASP.NET itself is a separate framework as of now. So on this using this ASP.NET in, in our early days, if somebody says that I am good at ASP.NET, we, we understand that he is good at ASP.NET web forms. That means he is good at ASPX pages. But now ASP.NET means it has a lot of things. It has few frameworks to develop sites and few frameworks to develop services. The frameworks like web forms we have already seen. ASPX pages. And you have web pages like you might have heard about CSHTML files. So you have HTML and C sharp code integrated in it. And single page apps, SPS, you might have heard about AngularJS supporting it a lot. MVC is very famous again. So all these things falls under the sites category of ASP.NET. And when coming towards services, yes, Web API, this is what we are going to learn and SignalR. I don't know whether you have heard about SignalR or not. I have separate course on SignalR. These are nothing but your push services or you can also call it as reverse Ajax. The famous example of SignalR is uh, your chat application. Now without request being sent from client to the server, server is pushing the data to all the clients which are connected to it. So again, that is also a service. So as of now, we are going to learn Web API. But in ASP.NET next version, they have unified few things. ASP.NET version next. Anyway, we are going to learn this API or you can say this Web API. But what is there in the version next is this. So in version next, it has unified MVC, Web Pages and Web API and they called it as unified web stack. But anyway, we are going to learn Web API separately. Before we proceed for a demo, let us try to understand the HTTP methods. See, whatever may be the type of application, what we do, we perform four operations. That is CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. So in your HTTP world, create is nothing but post, I call it as verbs, you have various verbs or HTTP verbs or HTTP methods. Post is for create, get is for read, put is for update and delete is for delete. Now what does this mean? Now let us see an example URI. If you see this manzoorthetrainer.com slash courses slash one, it does not say anything what it is going to do unless and until we attach a verb to it or an HTTP method to it. Now, if I attach get HTTP method to it, then it is going to get that first record. If I attach delete HTTP method to it, it is going to delete that record. So that is the base URI. Base URI should not change. Only your HTTP method changes. Now, if I say the HTTP method type as put, then it is going to update that record. And of course, you need to pass the data in the body of the form, but it is going to update that record one. So these are the basic things. And your web API works on code over convention. If you want to have a create method, its name should be post or at least its name should start with post. And if you want to have a get method, its name should be get or at least its name should start with get. Same way put and delete. So we need to follow certain conventions. And of course, if it is a web API between your courses and manzoodthetrainer.com, you should have an API term that is being used by your 
Microsoft. So anyway, this is a basic understanding. So depending upon get or delete, it is going to perform some operation. So now it is the time for us to see a demo. We will uh, try to create a very simple web API. Then we will host it on IIS. Then we will try to consume it in two different clients. One is on Windows app with the help of C sharp code and another is on web app with the help of jQuery code. So to consume a web API, I can use a C sharp server side code or I can use jQuery client side code. Because for web devices, you have jQuery, but if you, if you have your Windows app, so we will see these both clients. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much.